Hola, Interneto. Um, it's me, it's Mike. It's your host of the Ghostlight Social, the show where we bring creative people together. We have a bit of a natter, we raise our hopes, and we dash our fears, and all that kind of malarkey. Joining me, as ever, is Mr. Lee Toombs. Both of us have proper like scrambled to get home tonight we've both been stuck in traffic so uh, excuse any crumbs around lee's face as he's just <laughs> rammed food directly into his hole <laughs> that is true i have actually i've never quite eaten a sandwich as quick as that it may be repeating what was the later. sandwich uh it was a um it was a it was a beef burger but it was one of those um what do they call them the like, veggie ones, you know, the almost... The Impossible Burger. The that Impossible kind of Burgers, yeah. that's it, yeah. Yeah, I really like them. I've, I've, I've stopped eating burgers full stop and just really? sort of having stuff like that, yeah. It's I'm, really good. I, I, I'm really interested by the Impossible Burger. Um, as I think I mentioned this before, I, I try and cut out meat at least a couple of days a week. I'm not ever going to go for vegetarian or vegan, um, mm. but I think as a meat eater, I've got a responsibility to stop people manufacturing cows that are killing the planet um i agree so i'm keen on that because i am i'm a little bit of of a i won't say an aficionado i'm a fan of of burgers generally (laughs) so i'm keen and i don't mean that as like a sarcastic kind of oh yeah i just like a cheeseburger i mean I I, I, i genuinely love cheeseburgers as a food like how some people love um steak <laughs> and are really quite passionate about it i'm the same when it comes to I a beef can, patty I can hear and cheese that in your voice yeah. you, you've you've you know you're very passionate about yeah. it but I mean, I will, I... the only thing i will say to, just to finish off my conversation on, yeah. on on the burger that i just had was that i didn't uh, i was i was missing the pickles i went to i went to the fridge and there were no pickles left so i was a little bit disappointed about that i'm not a big fan um, of pickles on a burger no oh I'd, i like a pickle on a burger Oh, yeah. And, you know, anything on top of it just to add a bit of flavour, I like that. To be fair, anyway, that's uh, that's an adolescent hangover of being a kid and picking them out from your McDonald's and wanging them at windows. <laughs> <laughs> and I've just never replaced do you still them. Pick, do you still pick them out now? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Go, you pick the gherkins out? Yeah. It's wrong. Once you get over a certain age, you've got to eat the gherkins. It I'm, makes it taste better. I'm really quite tempted, to be honest. Now that I'm kind of... Um, cooking my own because we have you know, an adult yeah because i'm because i'm an adult and i can cook um but because I, I, I me and a friend who lives down the street we do this thing like oh before lockdown we used to think where once a month we'd get together and either go to the cinema or we'd cook cheeseburgers and try and make ultimate cheeseburgers um and mine would always kind of a, a, a run on the classic kind of american thing and he would always come up with these bizarre like chicken and pork blended with this that and the other and it wouldn't be a cheeseburger but it'd be a, a nice kind of meaty sandwich um and i've kind of been thinking of ways to get that kind of pickly flavor on, but not have a gherkin on it so I'll, I'll, <laughs> i've been thinking about on, so i'm thinking about finely shredding onion so it's almost like a ribbon of onion and then pickling that as like a pickled onion thing yeah that, that'd be quite good yeah we can buy that can't you no. Yeah, but I mean, I live in Bradford. I can't buy shit like that. Of course you can. What are you talking about? You get in one of, get one of numerous convenience stores around you and you'll find all sorts of stuff like that. The thing that I can't get, which I'm really gutted about, is sauerkraut huh? in in a jar smaller. Because there's only me who likes it in this house and you open it and you've got to eat it within like three weeks. I'm not going to eat that much sauerkraut. It's like that. It's massive. I like. I want you a little get a jar. Smaller one. No, you just can't. It's, oh. it's like massive family size, or you can bollocks. Well, there's a there's obviously a gap in the market. Yeah. Listen, I'm not talking about food anymore because we talked about food a lot on the last episode, Did and we? quite frankly, this is getting a bit too foody for my liking. <laughs> it had been getting a little bit too much like the South Bank show. And now it's getting a little bit too foody. So if you want a food poo podcast, <laughs> if, you if you want, want a, food a food poo, yeah, yeah. If you want a food all, all podcast, poo, all poo then we'll food. do that separately. Yeah. But look, I've got nothing to share. Um, I'd like to get straight to our guests, um, if I can. And what I will say before we do, Mike, before you bring the guests in, because I could see you just starting to nudge slightly and just what I'm I was preparing to, say, to change shots. So, so one of our guests I've known for quite a while, um, a good friend and colleague. Um, so I'm looking forward to that chat. The other guest, because they're not listening, the other guest is a director, right? So what? So, so make sure that I don't make a fool of myself, because you know there is potential there right. in the future. So just, just 
yeah, just keep an eye on. So, me. would you like me to do all the talking? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's probably wise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get our guessing. Okay. Really, really lucky, uh, and thank you for uh, finally making it work, uh, and and I, I can get you on and together as well, which is great because I know you know each other. So, um, director Ruth Carney and actor musician, just all round good egg, Steve Cooper. How are we? We're good, I think. We're all right, aren't we, Steve? Yeah, yeah, we're not doing too bad. Losing the will to live a little bit after that bloody pickle scenario. <laughs> but, although I'm strangely drawn in because, mate, you're not far around. We used to have as a condiment when we were uh, young, just thinly sliced onions with vinegar poured on it, let it stay for a day or something like that, and they're gorgeous on oh, the yeah. salad. But then you'd have to get into red onions, balsamic vinegar, apple cider vinegar, but that's down you, you mate. And sauerkraut-wise, make your own. Google it, a, a jar, have a little jar of it. It keeps for ages, the sauerkraut, mate. But Jesus on Christ, Christ. Whoa, yeah, whoa, stop whoa. eating meat. <laughs> you were using, the, you were losing the will to live, and now you're advising him on making his own sauerkraut. <laughs> no, it was a double-edged thing. I was, I was rubbing my eyes, but I, I couldn't stop listening. I was strangely. Do you have a lot of followers? Is there a lot of? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> oh, good. And Ruth, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. And I like a pickle on my burger, and I'm vegetarian, just so everybody knows. Mike, how are we doing? What have we just gone live again? Uh, yep, yep, all sorted. Yeah, that's um, that. It's that's interesting. You say that, Ruth, about um, about uh, the script and things being rewritten because um, I was having a conversation with somebody today who's gone back at Emmerdale, and they yeah. were saying a, a lot of their scenes have now become uh, two the two handers and uh, and a lot of telephone conversations as well yeah. where where possible yeah. to keep, keep that social distance in there. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know what they I should. I got offered a block at Emmerdale starting last week, but I thought I was going back to casualty, so it didn't happen. So I don't go back to Emmerdale till November. But I know everybody's back because I've seen mm. it. But, I know they're being really strict and really looking after everybody. Yeah. But it'll be interesting, you know, I'm sure there's no scenes happening in the wool pack, but maybe with what Boris announced yesterday, they'll start, you know, maybe they'll do it like that. I don't I don't know what their plans are. Mm. And then obviously what you've got with casualty is the whole situation that it is actually a casualty department yeah. that's going out as a drama. So, you know, there's dealing with that as well, because how do you socially distance doing a doctor and a patient because doctor and patients aren't socially distancing they'll have to all like they like they used to do in the carry-on films where they stand at the end of the bed <laughs> yeah. with a clipboard yeah. just sort of talking well you, you know we joke about it, there will be and there'll be lots of doing shots where you know there was me and steve if i was shooting you and steve and something i'll be shooting you without steve there and then turning around and putting steve there to be, to be fair mean? when i worked with steve before i was never there yeah he i've heard he's a bit like johnny depp I'd be in that carry-on scene. Now, <laughs> what's the bleeding time? <laughs> yeah, that kind of <laughs> I think they're doing like a couple of special episodes to deal with what's happened, and then they'll get back into their serial stuff, um, which is what I'm, I'm in the middle of. And I think you know more time to shoot is going to be given. Hooray! So, so can... think about it for the last three months, won't they? You know, the technical guys trying to get their heads around it and thinking, what can we do? Absolutely. So there will be ways, yeah. but it was then two scene things, uh, lots of that and lots of monologues and whatnot. Uh, the Archers, I think, was the first, is the first one to start. I don't know if anyone's... I'm not a massive Archers fan, but yeah, it was worth tuning in for some of these because you, you could see the actors in your mind's eye under the duvet <laughs> in the back bedroom, <laughs> putting their heart and soul into this hastily written monologue, trying yeah. to make decent stuff out of it. Well, they, they, uh, they, 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 they Just being in their own heads with no doubt. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just uh, Emmerdale. I, I, I was talking to Kath, who plays the vicar. I was yeah. talking to her last night, uh, and she says they've all got these big, massive wooden two-meter poles, and they're constantly going round uh, and all. just being utterly militant with it. And there's just so many stuff, and it's just like she she was saying how it's even though it's kind of the reducing it to one meter plus, how they're just going to go no nope, two meters. We, we've got the we've got the sticks bollocks to it and just stick. yeah and i just yeah. think that's so low tech but brilliant it is brilliant isn't it though because it's the best way of doing it and just you know 
you go that way, you go that way, and you're two metres away from mm-hmm. each other. Well, you say yeah. it's the best way, Ruth, though I did see online somebody who had some tights on their head with an apple in the end swinging <laughs> it, and that, that seemed to do the trick as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they have to be militant about it because, you know, what we, you know, especially as actors, you know what we're like. You know, we'll soon forget that and we'll be, yeah. you know, okay. Tonguing, tonguing each other before, you know what I mean? Well, you see, so. I mean, I'm going to be careful what I say here. I mean, Steve's worked with me, but I I can't imagine yet as a director being somewhere where I have to socially distance as as my job because my job, I'm not, I don't, you know, I'm not saying I hug everybody, because not, you know, but I do like, you know, when you're reading through stuff and I, you're reading yeah. through a scene on set, I like us all being yeah. together and kind of, you know what I mean? I'd, I can't imagine, I'm doing it now with my chair, but I can't imagine an actor being two metres away yeah. from Get me. back. To be uh, fair, though, Rick, there's a few actors that I wouldn't mind being socially distanced from. Well, quite frankly, I'm... Me. No, no, <laughs> I'm only kidding. That is not true. That is not true. Well, not... you know, there's no, there's no shame in it. <laughs> but, uh, it, but it, it does lead on to theatre because I think that TV and film and whatnot, I've got a chance. They've got a plan. They've got a chance. I've heard of other things. August seems to be the time where that people are, uh, are trying to get it up and running for, like Ruth was saying. But theatre man, a oh my eggs and my baskets <laughs> that I had set up for this year. It was going so beautifully, and I spent last year producing two plays of myself, putting myself in it, of course, doing the whole rigmarole, taking one of them to Edinburgh, losing my shirt on it, you know, but doing everything that I needed to do, and it did. It worked. It set some things up. Won the commission for the uh, Victoria Wood Happy Festival, yeah. which I think yeah. I said off air, but that's happening anyway. So that's tell us, but thing. tell us a bit like a bit about, a bit about that anyway. Yeah, the Happy Festival is a good thing actually. Uh, the, the, uh, last year at the Bury Art Museum, the, the the Victoria Wood Archive. I didn't know about it at the time, but they put on a show in show or whatever you call it exhibition. Uh, a Victoria Wood stuff, you know, and she did keep everything from her school reports and all that. There's no dirt on Victoria Wood. She, you know, she is what it says on the tin, really. She got her head down and wanted to just, she had a piano in her room and a telly in her room and a typewriter, and that was it, really, from when she was a kid onwards, by the looks of things. So they thought we'll have a festival uh, based, called the Happy Festival. They still had some money in the pot, basically, for the festival. So we'll get some dance things, we'll uh, get some stand-up things, uh, loads they are going on, lots of different workshops for different things, people who are involved with Victoria were producers and things like that, uh, coming down to speak, you know, uh, there was even talk of getting, what's her name, what was her mate called? Judy Walters. <laughs> Judy Walters. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I, thought, I thought we'd gone yeah. off again there, Michael, I thought we'd lost you. <laughs> uh, and uh, of course it was for me, the anniversary of her, yeah. one of her birthdays, it would have yeah. been. And they built us, there's a statue there, uh, built to her, that was raised by a public subscription, which got a lot of different comments about the whole thing. Who is it? Is it, it looks like uh, Grace and Perry holding a dildo. That's a microphone. Uh, and it does have a look of Wendelin out of Lady Wallace and Gromit. Yeah. At the time, they tried to put everything online. And did lots of things that were going on online. So I did took one of the characters that I'd written for it and did a vlog of day 12, day 43, day what's it, as things in his household deteriorated. Uh, and did these workshops that I've mentioned to you before, some Victoria Wood uh, monologues. So gathered some people uh, who'd never done it before, who'd never taken part in anything before. Uh, they got forced into a lot of them because I, I started with people who I knew and I said, right, who do you know who might get involved in this? Uh, on my first meeting with them on the Zoom, I'd say, so, uh, you know, uh, who got in t- contact with you again? It was Kerry. She said, we had to do it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> what is it hard? <laughs> I, I'm God bless this Victoria Wood Foundation and the Bury Council because it was a pay- one of the only paydays for me. Uh, I've been through them, through doing these vlogs and the yeah. workshops. Uh, and the play in lieu of, although next year the money will be spent. Wait till they want the play putting on him, mate. Next year. <laughs> Oops. Uh, you need deadlines, don't you? What money? <laughs> Listen, while we're while we're talking about, it, I'm just going to jump some questions um, because we're we're sort of talking about the industry anyway at the moment, and uh, it seems like a good time just to continue that and just sort of hopes and fears about about the industry and about 
you know what how you feel we're going to get back in it's uh, it's really doing me in because i'm trying to wrap my brains because I put, like I say, theatre was what I've kind of geared myself up for at the moment. Because it's the only, if you're a bit part actor, it's the only thing you've got a guarantee of, having something decent to get your teeth into and to talk to people about and work yeah. with other actors, you know, yeah. is to yeah. do theatre. But yeah. there might, it's going to have to be outdoors. It's going to be have to be, uh, I don't know, but it's that, that getting some remuneration in for it and for actors as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to try some stuff, but uh, really, can't see the theatres, like West End and all that. Uh, mm. Kibosh. I don't feel for him particularly, but except for the actors and the directors and people working in there, yeah. you know. Uh, Ruth, with theatre and TV and things going forward, hopes and fears? Theatre frightens the life out of me because I might be doing television, but I've just, you know, I directed a play at the New Vic at the beginning of the year and, you know, it's my home theatre. And What, I, what know, was that at the New Vic? I did Jim Cartwright's too. Ah, uh, so um and I've never directed there before and you know and, and it went down really well and I'm supposed to be going back there but I don't even feel like I want to email Teresa the artistic director with suggestions because I'm like she's got enough on her plate without me going what about this what about this yeah, yeah the reality is is it isn't just actors and directors it's also all the people who usher all the people who work in box office the cleaners you know there's a massive amount of people employed in theatre and now all those people don't have work and you know with Plymouth now going into redundancies um, which is a major producing house in this country you know what's going to follow next Sheffield Crucible or Birmingham or Leeds or you know it's really really frightening I like look at social media and I think well, surely everybody thinks the same as me. And on my social media, everybody does think the same as me. Yeah, yeah, the echo you know chamber, I mean? yeah. You know what Thinking it comes exactly to the same thing today. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine some of the streams of some people whose we don't see, they are friends and what kind of things they yeah. say and all that? It is, oh, it turns your stomach just to think like, about it. Yeah. Somebody said the other day, there was a, br- I don't know, somebody tweeted it. It was somebody brilliant to him following. And, um, it'll be me it'll probably he'll have been me, I would think. and um and they said you know let's turn everything off for a day and then see what the government do so yeah. let's turn spotify apple music netflix yeah. amazon all television turn it all off for a day and then people go art isn't important in this country go on sorry sorry i was going to say it's the modern version of a general strike isn't it yeah. essentially because you're absolutely right. I, I, I saw the same thing. I, I can't remember. I can't remember who it was. It was somebody uh, like big, wasn't it, saying it? But yeah, it worries me. I don't know about theatre and TV. Yes, okay, it can go back because you can social distance better. You haven't got an audience. But like you say, there's going to be smaller crews, yeah. um, and also big budget stuff. You know, I, I don't know who I was reading about. Somebody who's got some Amazon series, like he's put everybody up in a hotel. Everybody can be tested for the coronavirus, blah, blah, blah. What happens to all the independent companies who can't afford to do that? What happens to all the people who are coming through doing the brilliant stuff on Channel 4? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or or yeah. kind of the indie companies, which is where art starts and all the mm. brilliant starts. And they're just oh, not... It's depressing, to- man. It is. It's, 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 it's depressing. Really? I mean, something will come out of it, and we'll see what where yeah. what arts are in this country and all. But uh, shit, man, I, I don't know. It's it's so sad. It's so it's dreadful. I mean, I really want to like, like, say... come on, and I really want to be positive. <laughs> no, right, come on, please, ask us an <laughs> No, wait, I'm just, listen, I'm, just, I'm trying to get it all out of the way, and then we can get onto the positive stuff while we're <laughs> on it. Yeah, no, I think we're, it... we're fucked. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> positive spin on that might be um and we've had a few people you know we had uh, rod dixon on from yeah. uh, from red ladder and he's, um, he, well, he's great he's great he's rod um uh, and and he was saying you know i think it was rod anyway i might be giving him credit where it's where it's not true but I, he will have been thinking this anyway yeah. knowing rod um that you know that, that there are certain companies to, that are not in buildings because mm. it's the companies and the producing that are in buildings which are really going to struggle. And I think there, there are companies like that and like Slunglow in Leeds as well, who, oh. yes, of course, they're all going to struggle. But it's what they this is what they do. This is sort of what they thrive on. Um, and I think, you know, there'll be some really wonderful work coming. Well, out. I knew Alan Lane for president, I, uh, for prime minister. I was at university with Alan. Yeah. So, you know, I've known him that long. And yeah. um and I just think he should just be the prime minister, frankly. <laughs> We'd be living in a better country. Yeah. <laughs> I'd vote for him. Let's move on slightly. Uh, although what I do want to know is, Steve, 
Um, from you first is what was the last line that you said to a live audience? No, that wasn't on the sheet. <laughs> uh, it was, wasn't it? That wasn't the line. Well, that's the line. That's fine. I thought you were reenacting it for line. a second. I can't do it. I am going through it. No, it was VE Day and VJ Day. There was no VD Day. Okay, very good. Yeah. Right, so what was that from? And then she wrapped it up. It was from Paradise Lodge. Oh, yeah. The play that I took to Edinburgh did afterwards about what's it? Uh, yeah. about Paradise Lodge. Dealing with the That's... mother-in-law when she had dementia. Yeah. That's one of the very best show, man. Went down a storm. Went down a storm. It was a lovely little show. Yeah, I, I might have said that just so on the strength young. of that title. I, I need to go check that out. Paradise Lodge is is brilliant. Ruth, yes. can you can you remember the last line that you directed? You've had a bit of time here. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't actually know. I can remember the last thing I said. Which what was that? <laughs> Just because we got told by um, the exact producer and everything, we weren't filming the next day, and then I said, can I say something? And I thanked all the crew. That's the last thing I said on set. So that's That'll the last do me. thing I can do. And that was, oh. a ca- that was casualty. Yeah, that was a that, casualty. That, that'll so. do me. Oh, I thought it was going to be, you'll never work in theatre again. <laughs> <laughs> no, Steve, didn't I say that to you? Yeah, no, not out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Sticking with you, Ruth, if that's all right, have you got a song for our isolation playlist? It's quite a new one, but I've been listening to um, um, Lady Gaga's new album. Okay. So mine would be, it's brilliant, her new album. So anything off her new album, really. I've been listening to the entire album. That's pick terrible, us, isn't it? Pick us something. Well, I don't know how you say it, so I'm going to embarrass myself. Is it Chrome? Chrome? Oh, God. Yeah, I, chrome, I know which one you mean. Chrome, you know which chrome, one yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. you? I can't you say can, it either. <laughs> chrome Akata or something it is, yeah. isn't it? Or So and it's yeah. all strings and everything, and it's just, I think she's incredible anyway. She I actually quite like Harry Styles. Didn't like this new one. I do. He's brilliant. brilliant. He is so good. Bloody watermelon sugar. It gets right in your ear. He's like an earworm. So I've been listening to him as well. But I would definitely say for me now, because I'm trying to get, you know, in a positive frame of mind, it's Lady Gaga's Chroma Chroma. Okay. So give us a song then, Steve. What have you got? I see you've got a Is that a ukulele behind you? Are you just playing to see me? What is that? That's a classical guitar. Oh, you play classical guitar? <laughs> no, I don't. No, <laughs> I, I, I've just started to play normal guitar, the acoustic yeah. guitar. So I play a little bit of acoustic guitar. I do play a bit of ukulele. So uh, there's been a couple of songs that have stuck with me over lockdown, and one in particular that I've kept having to uh, play. I, and only your question made me even think about it. I just want to dance the night away, the Mavericks. Love that. Oh, I, sang that. Just, I sang that. I sang that in Pancho. I sang, it in Panto, I sang it in Panto two years ago. Well, don't spoil it for me. I like that song. Get <laughs> <laughs> your ukulele out, Len. Let's do it. All right, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the is, this is where I go off camera yeah, for a quick verb. I, I, I think the reason, that I, the reason that I went for it when I was thinking about it is it's just that thing of release, isn't it? It's about freedom and just that, oh, it'd be great to just really let yourself go and all that. Can you hear that, Michael, on your earphones? Listen to the words. Here comes my happiness again. Right back to where it should have been. Cause now it's gone and I am free COVID can't do a thing to me I just want to dance the night away With senoritas who can't sway Right now tomorrow's looking bright just like the sunny morning light. And if you should see it, please let it know that I'm well. <laughs> As you can tell, 
And if it should tell you it wants come back, tell it no. I gotta go. I just wanna dance another way. Listen to this again. Right now, tomorrow's looking bright. Just like the sun in the morning. Bum, 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 bum. I'm worked on the ending. Karacha, da 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 uh, I think it was working with you, mate. Oh, do you know what I mean? I'll tell you what, I can sit down on a couch and get in a car and drive it away. Don't you worry about that. Well, it, it, yeah, because it, it wasn't a moment, but it was. I suppose it was that show. Yeah. Although the, the moments on that show was when I got to sit down next to Kenneth Craner and, and have a good chat with him, you know? <laughs> uh, looking awesome, awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was that show because that show... Like I was saying before, that if you're a bit part actor, you get some little things to do on TV. Like I have this regular copper on Corey, uh, and they know him. Somebody in there knows him, but the writers don't really. Uh, but there's never anything for a bit part actor to get the teeth into because you're always setting up a reaction from yeah. you know from the talent, aren't you? Yeah. That was the show where uh, I got everything, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you know, got your actor's dream of a, of a part where you're in every episode and they have a through line and it goes somewhere and they have emotional scenes and funny scenes and and of course that was in the flesh and we had the the we had the lovely marie on a few weeks ago uh, and she said she said the same thing that show she said did you mention um, me she didn't mention you actually um no she did <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mentioned you, and she brushed over it. Oh, she still didn't recognise. No, I don't ring about. That's another ex-wife gone. <laughs> Ruth, a, fa- a favourite moment, industry moment. So I've got an industry moment when I was much younger. So I did the um, emerging directors course at the National that I think they still do at the National Theatre Studio. And like you get everybody teaching you. So like at that time, Nick Eitan was the artistic director. So we had Nick Eitan, we had Trevor Norn, we had Patrick Marber, we had Dawn French. That was a pretty, do you know what I mean? There's only 12 of us. But on the last day, they went, we've got a real treat for you. And you're going to have the entire day with this person. And it was Ian McKellen. Wow. Okay. And we had the entire day. I was only, how old would I have been? Probably 24, 25. He'd just finished Lord of the Rings. He came in with leather pants on and a oh, white shirt. Do you know what I mean? Did. Sat down and just was charm personified. And I don't mean arsey, I just mean like, what an amazing man. Oh, I'm well and, gel, man. And we just got to ask him. We just literally spent eight hours asking him. Wow. And then it was like, because it was the last day of our course, we all had drinks like in the National Theatre Studio. And um, I was the only Northern, I was the only one who hadn't got an RP accent on that course. <laughs> so we obviously Which just is not surprising, like, is it? I'll talk to her. Yeah. And um, he just kept filling my wine glass up and talking to me. And I was like, <laughs> I'm getting pissed with Ian McKellen. <laughs> and can I just tell you one more? As long as it's as good as that. If it's not, I'm going to cut it you off. It is for me. It. So I'm a massive Sopranos fan. Right, okay. I'm so I think like Sopranos is one of the best things. So when I was working with Matthew Watchers, who now runs um, the Old Vic, and we were doing, I don't know whether we were doing Lord of the Rings or Ghost, I can't actually, it must have been Lord of the Rings. I went to New York on holiday, and Matthew got a play on in New York that James Gandolfini, who plays Tony Soprano, is in. I was in, and um, Matthew said, you can have my seat, so I didn't have to pay for the ticket, brilliant. And after he went, do you want to come meet him? And I went, what? So I met, like... Hope Davis, Jeff Dan, you know, Hope Davis is um, Marshall Warren, you know, Oscar winners. I was mm. like, hi, hi, hi. James Gandolfini opened his dressing room door and Matthew went, Jim, this is my friend Ruth. And I just went. <laughs> 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 and Matthew looked at me. And I was like, I couldn't speak. I was like, oh, my God. And then I did pull myself together. So they're not really interested moments. They're Ruth's embarrassed herself in front of really famous people. <laughs> 
the it best all counts. It all counts. Yeah, that's that's, that, that's great. That's yeah. I'm great. glad you asked me before her. Uh, I, <laughs> <follow that. laughs> yeah. I had a feeling, Steve. You, I just had a feeling. I went with it. <laughs> I had. A... <laughs> okay, good. So, uh, Ruth, sticking with you, most coronavirus thing you've done. Do you know what I've been doing? This is really sad. I can't believe I'm going to admit this. You know when we had particularly had the really good weather? Yeah. Like, not now, but in the middle of it all. Yeah. I used to sit outside in adult colour. An adult... Oh, sorry. sorry. Adult <laughs> colour. Adult Nothing colour. Wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing adult colouring with... books. And I bought myself 100 new gel pens. So that that's the most corona thing I've done. Which I is... Because I only do that on holiday. Yeah. All right, he's showing off now. Yeah. No, that's what I did. That's my adult colouring. It's the same, yeah. but it's just 3D. So that's, that's the right. most corona. You know, like, that's the most corona. I haven't done any banana bread in a rock. Who can be bothered? <laughs> yeah, I, I, mean. I agree. I couldn't agree with you more. Steve, what, what, what's your... Um, I did not order a jigsaw for Tracy. It's not still not bloody come. I ordered it weeks ago. <laughs> uh, we'll, see, we'll, see, we'll see about that. I did bake a banana bread, <clears throat> as it happens. Yeah. But, you know, when you... When I saw this list, this on the question, the one that came was right. We've done loads of bloody we're COVID up, aren't we? We're two people here together. We've been COVID backwards, and and Tracy's been on to it as well. She's had to watch everything, every briefing, every. So she's got herself worried and bad dreams and bloody, uh, and so I've kind of gone the other way a bit. But at the beginning, uh, on the local Facebook group for Ramsbottom, somebody's saying right, we're, we were organising. Uh, a thing where we'll get goods in and we'll take some to people who need them, you know, uh, on lockdown. Great idea. So I went down for the meeting, which was at the library, as it happened. I don't know how they got in. Uh, and some stuff had already arrived because they'd been doing it for a little while. He's getting people to donate stuff. And they had that in this room. And it, but it was a proper sitcom. They were all around talking. Nobody could hardly say, what do we put in there? Uh, and this woman says, condoms. We need to be putting condoms in there. <laughs> really? I, and uh, it was like, uh, why? Cause she said, but otherwise there's going to be a population explosion by the end of <laughs> lockdown. And I was like, uh, I was trying to keep stum because it's one of them where everyone's trying to put a bit in and all that. And for once, I thought, it's no, Tracy kind of pushed me to go down. And then after a while, this guy says, uh, I think it'd be all right if we, I'm a bit hungry. Do you think it'd be all right if we got something off the... <laughs> and then went out, came back with a, a bag of popcorn and some bloody ginger nuts. <laughs> Right. Yeah. A few days later, we saw on the, the very official site saying, uh, "Don't go with these people." Whatever they're doing, <laughs> it's not right. Okay. So we did another one, and we did actually have a woman to take a pack uh, to do some shopping for. Only around the corner. Hey, uh, what do you want? Uh, she said, "I don't need anything yet." Well, on Saturday, I will. Saturday. Okay, ready. I'm gonna go and get you shopping. What do you want? A chocolate orange uh, and a angel delight. <laughs> All the essentials. Yeah. And I How many Matt... sitcoms have you written, Steve? Since... I have not dealt with sitcoms. <laughs> yeah, <of course> <laughs> the first two weeks. Well, it's one that I did sell a sitcom a while ago to Channel 4, but it never got made. But we got the, we got the candy for it. Uh, just something similar came out just as they were casting it. Uh, so I've done, I've done quite, I've had a little go. Uh, uh, and I go to a ukulele club once every Thursday and it's perfect for a sitcom. You know, it's like Dad's Army meets kind of the <laughs> fat club or group get together kind of thing. Uh, and it is funny. And so I'd, every time I go, I've been making a little note of, oh, that could be the thing and all that. Uh, and, I, and I just thought, oh, I'm now to do. Why don't I go to their notes and I'll just put them in some order, just get a structure for the thing. But like sat at the computer for three days, solid, near enough, getting down for something to eat and all that. And then I went downstairs and said to Tracy, uh, I've just, just written a sitcom. So I wrote it and it's all right. I did a little Zoom reading with uh, six actors uh, last oh. week. Was I not available uh, at that point? <laughs> You, you were probably doing this, Lee. None of us will be, mate. I've written myself a part in it, and I've, I've been there before. I've been in Baby Cow, I, and I had Henry Normal say, right, so who's playing him? And I'm like, well, you know, because we're thinking David Mitchell. I'm thinking, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's got heart. Uh, it's called Ukulele Haley. Time is ticking on. Um, what has your vice been throughout lockdown? I have no, like I said, I, I didn't know what the tone was on this whole affair, so I brought four. I brought water in case it was very artsy and like Radio yeah. 4. Yeah. A cup of tea in case it was more friendly, like on the sofa and we were having a chat. Uh, Budweiser in case we were getting a bit pally, uh, you know. And then if you wanted to get banned from YouTube again, I've got me uh, decent <laughs> rum and all that, get a bit of that down. Uh, 
No, because uh, I'm pre-diabetic, so I'm steered away from everything really sweet. Okay. Tracy, even knowing bargain booze across the road, uh, I went over yesterday uh, to get some cigarette papers, uh, and I was just looking over, uh, and the girl behind the counter, who went, no, Lisa, she said, uh, stop eyeing the sweets, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy's told them all, don't sell him any, no sweet <laughs> treats. Any. Uh, Ruth, what's your, been your advice? Apart from gin... <laughs> okay, we'll advice. add gin to the list. I love gin, um, but my vice has been sugar-free cherry aid. Okay, that's interesting. Well, you want to go old school, sixty-nine p co-op cherry aid, sugar-free. Wow. Okay. It's actually been I've been addicted to it during <laughs> yeah. lockdown. I'm going to give it a go. I haven't drink it, drunk it since I was a kid. You know, yeah. since the Alpine Pop Man used to come round or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So does it? So does it still have the taste? It has the same taste yeah. as that. It doesn't lose out with the. You can't go posh. I tried like the Fanta one, the Fanta Cherry. Ah, oh, it's no good. No. Uh, you've got to go proper co-op. Yeah. yeah. You know okay. I mean, yeah, beautiful. Fair enough. Um, and very last question, sticking with you, Ruth. Um, uh, at the height of the lockdown, how many toilet rolls did you have in the house? 96. <laughs> no, you didn't. Oh. We did. <laughs> Straight <laughs> to the top. The water. How did you have 96? Because, to be fair, there's been four, ad- five adults in lockdown in this okay. house. Okay. So my mum's in an annex, so I'm counting hers as well. But it's attached to the house. I can walk in. Yeah. And then there's been me, my husband, my best friend Sam, who's an actress, and um, and her boyfriend Matthew. So yeah, I did <laughs> to the point where Sam actually went, "Don't buy any more toilet rolls," because <laughs> I'd be like, if anybody went out just for like you know your essentials, which you could only go out for, I'd be like, get toilet rolls. They've got to- toilet rolls in the co-op. Get toilet rolls, and he was like becoming ridiculous. Where the hell do you keep ninety six toilet rolls? Just around and about, you know. <laughs> Just everywhere. <laughs> yeah. They're on the way down now, but I did, honestly. I, mean, I was like, this is ridiculous. I've got, it was like around four packs of 24. Is that 96 or is that more? Yeah, it's 96. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, that's impressive. Yeah, that that's not impressive. Impressive. You've just that's lived pulled not, the league. Not even bothered, are you? You've not yeah. even, no, no <laughs> remorse there whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, if somebody on the street had wanted the toilet roll, I'd take the toilet roll. Were you advertising the fact that you had 96? Yeah. Mm, You know. I I kept my eye out because we've got some, you know, people of an age on our street. So if anybody had been struggling, I'd have have given some toilet roll. But I'm not running out of toilet roll. No. 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 (laughs) Steve, can you top that? Good point and well made. Uh, uh, yeah, it wasn't. We, we normally Tracy gets this stuff online called "Give a Crap." Oh, well, we've uh, had a couple. Of, yeah. So you get a um, a huge box of it, uh, but we went almost towards the end of that. So I think we just topped up a few at a time. So we didn't go panic on that. We've got other flour. We've been on lots of flour and yeast hunts and all that kind of thing. We certainly did to the max. Uh, in fact, there was a bit of yeast that got hand in a, a fair block of yeast that got handed over to someone at Morrison's mm-hmm. by the guy behind there because the bakers couldn't bake any bread at one time. In there, and he had yeast that was going to go off. So you got so involved. So I caught in the uh, in the kitchen, cutting them cutting them up into little cubes and putting them in silver foil, and it just looked like a drug deal. It just looked <laughs> like she'd got these about fifty <laughs> packets. These things. Some were going to so she was dealing. She, some were going to our John Lee and she was, <laughs> some Lee's wall and all that. It was like sorted. She was sorted. Are you, are you all right for? You all right for? Uh, what is, what's it called? Why? Have you got the old why? I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Good. Well, that's it. Right. Listen, both of you, thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. It does. Um, I've been stuck you. in a sweaty hot van all day, um, and this has really cheered my day up. So thank you so much. It's been fun. Thank you so much. Awesome. L- love to the families and stay safe and well, and see you on the other yeah. side. All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for all your work, guys. Well done. Another good show tonight. Very much enjoyed it. Thank you very much for your company. Yeah, it's been great. Just one other thing. Jeremy in the chat um, Mm. said, uh, and I I meant to bring it up earlier, but the chat was going so well. Um, He says, I once had a chat with a guy who used to be in the Ben Hill show. I asked him what he was like, and he said, he's a nice bloke, and then he used to practice the guitar whilst he he wasn't filming. A little, oh. a little insight into Benny Hill. Oh, there you go. A bit like, a bit like our Steve. Yeah. 
Thank you, YouTube. Thank you, Twitch. Thank you, Periscope. Um, don't forget, like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, um, leave us a comment, hit me up on Twitter at Mike Makes Films and at Lee Toomes and Totally Reels. Um, but Totally Reels is we're, we're we're back and booking. Um, we're back and booking. So if you're an actor and you you want in reels written, you wanting them filmed, you're wanting them edited, um, go to. Um, totallyshowreels.co.uk find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter at Totally Reels, so if you want to be involved and you want to kick off your post lockdown acting career, then you need to come see us and you don't need to spend a thousand pound on a scene thanks for for being with us two nights a week, as, as we enter into one night a week, we're not going anywhere, we're just doing yeah. one night a week, but as we enter into one night a week uh, I hope you, you come with us and you carry on um, yeah. watching and enjoying and learning as we do um so on that note adios from bunk